today back then. What happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1753, in Sweden today, February 17th is followed by March 1st as the country moves from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. In 1773, Captain James Cook and his crew become the first Europeans to sail below the Antarctic Circle. In 1776, the first volume of Edward Gibbon's seminal work, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, is published. In 1801, following a tie in the Electoral College, the U.S. House of Representatives elected Thomas Jefferson president over Aaron Burr. In 1809, Miami University is chartered by the state of Ohio. In 1815, the Treaty of Ghent is ratified by the U.S. Senate and signed by President James Madison, ending the War of 1812. In 1819, the United States House of Representatives passes the Missouri Compromise for the first time. In 1865, Columbia, South Carolina is burned as Confederate forces flee from advancing Union forces. In 1873, a group of Modoc warriors defeats the United States Army in the First Battle of the Stronghold in Northern California. In 1876, sardines are first canned by Julius Wolfe in Eastport, Maine. In 1878, the first telephone exchange in San Francisco opens with 18 phones. In 1897, the Parent Teacher Association, or PTA, was founded in Washington, D.C. as the National Congress of Mothers. In 1904, one of the world's most performed works, Giacomo Puccini's opera Madame Butterfly, premieres in Milan, Italy. In 1913, the first minimum wage law in the United States takes effect. It was in Oregon. In 1915, Edward Stone is mortally wounded he becomes the first U.S. combatant to die in World War I. In 1917, the United States pays Denmark $25 million for the U.S. Virgin Islands. That's one of my favorite places. I try to come up with the money for sure. In 1927, the Toronto Maple Leafs beat the New York Americans 4-1 in the team's first game since changing its name from the St. Patrick's. In 1929, the cartoon character Popeye the Sailor Man first appears in the Thimble Theater comic strip. In 1931, today was the first telecast of a sporting event in Japan. It was baseball. In 1932, Irving Berlin's musical Face the Music premieres in New York City. In 1933, Newsweek magazine is published for the first time. Also in 1933, the Blaine Act ends prohibition in the United States. In 1934, the first high school auto driving course is offered in State College, Pennsylvania. In 1936, a South Dakota state record low temperature of negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 50 degrees Celsius is set today. Also in 1936, the world's first superhero, The Phantom, a cartoon strip by Lee Falk, makes its first appearances in comics. In 1943, New York Yankee Joe DiMaggio enlists into the U.S. Army. In 1945, Nazis begin the evacuation of the Auschwitz concentration camp as Soviet forces close in. In 1946, the U.N. Security Council holds its first session. In 1947, the Voice of America begins broadcasting to the USSR. In 1949, The Goldbergs, the first sitcom on American television, airs for the first time. In 1955, the Ladies Figure Skating Championship in Vienna is won by Tenley Albright of the United States. Also in 1955, Mike Suchek sets a PGA 72-hole record of 257, which was not broken until 2001. In 1957, a fire at a home for the elderly in Warrington, Missouri kills 72 people. In 1958, the comic strip BC first appears. Dippin' Road, one of my favorites. In 1959, Vanguard 2, the first weather satellite, is launched to measure cloud cover distribution. In 1963, professional basketball player Michael Jordan is born. In 1964, in Westbury v. Sanders, the Supreme Court of the United States rules that congressional districts have to be approximately equal in population. In 1965, the Ranger 8 probe launches on its mission to photograph the Sea of Tranquility region of the moon in preparation for the Apollo 11 lunar landing. 
In 1966, a B-52 bomber collides with a KC-135 Stratotanker over Spain, killing seven airmen and dropping three 70 kiloton nuclear bombs near the town of Palomares. Fortunately, they were not armed, but wow. In 1967, the Beatles released Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields today. In 1968, the Soviet Union wins its third Olympic ice hockey gold medal in Grenoble with a 5-0 win over Canada. In 1969, Black Panther Party members Bunchy Carter and John Huggins are killed during a meeting in Campbell Hall on the campus of UCLA. Also in 1969, Bob Dylan and Johnny Cash record an album starting today that is never released. In 1969 as well, Cloud Nine, the ninth studio album by The Temptations, is released. It becomes the Billboard Album of the Year. In 1970, U.S. Army officer Jeffrey McDonald murders his pregnant wife and two small daughters. In 1972, U.S. President Richard Nixon leaves Washington, D.C. for a groundbreaking trip to China. Also in 1972, Italian tenor Luciano Pavarotti receives a record 17 curtain calls after his performance at New York's Metropolitan Opera. In 1973, U.S. National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger meets Chinese leader Mao Zedong, where the Chinese leader jokingly offers to send 10 million Chinese women to the United States. In 1974, Robert K. Preston, a disgruntled U.S. Army private, buzzes the White House in a stolen helicopter. I bet you we haven't heard from him since. Also in 1974, the 16th Daytona 500 occurs, Richard Petty is the first driver to win back-to-back -back titles at Daytona. In 1977, convicted murderer Gary Gilmore is executed by a firing squad in Utah, ending a 10-year moratorium on capital punishment in the United States. In 1979, Vietnam is invaded by China due to Vietnam's relationship with Russia. In 1981, Chrysler Corporation reports the largest corporate losses in U.S. history. Also in 1981, American, what, actress, model, singer, um, person, Paris Hilton is born. In 1982, American pianist Thelonious Monk passes away today. Also in 1982, in numerous cities in the United States, temperatures fall to their lowest levels in over 100 years. It is referred to as Cold Sunday. In 1986, Johnson & Johnson announces it will no longer sell capsule drugs. In 1989, a six-week study of the Arctic atmosphere shows there is no ozone hole, as many expected. In 1991, Operation Desert Storm begins early in the morning when Iraq fires eight Scud missiles into Israel in an unsuccessful bid to provoke Israeli retaliation. In 1992, serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer is jailed for life, which wasn't that long as it turned out. Also in 1992, during a visit to South Korea, the Japanese Prime Minister apologizes for forcing Korean women into sexual slavery during World War II. In 1994, a magnitude 6.7 earthquake hits Northridge, California. In 1995, the Great Hanshin earthquake, a magnitude 7.3, occurs near Kobe, Japan, causing extensive property damage and killing 6,000 434 people. Also in 1995, the 11th U.S. Soap Opera Digest Awards air. Days of Our Lives wins. Also in 1995, Colin Ferguson is found guilty of killing six people on the Long Island Railroad in New York. And in 1995 as well, a federal judge allows a lawsuit claiming that U.S. tobacco makers knew nicotine was addictive and manipulated its levels to keep customers hooked. In 1996, an earthquake that caused a tsunami in Indonesia left 108 people dead, 423 injured, and 58 missing. In 1998, Matt Drudge breaks the story of the Bill Clinton-Monica Lewinsky affair on his website, The Drudge Report. Also in 1998, NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft overtakes Pioneer 10 to become the farthest object from Earth in space. In 2001, U.S. President Bill Clinton posthumously promotes explorer William Clark of Lewis and Clark fame from lieutenant to captain in the U.S. Army. 
In 2002, the Mount Nyiragongo volcano erupts in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, displacing an estimated 400,000 people. Also in 2002, Always on Time by R&B artist Ja Rule featuring Ashanti starts a two-week run at number one on the U.S. singles charts. In 2004, the single If I Ain't Got You is released by Alicia Keys and becomes the Billboard Song of the Year. In 2006, a massive mudslide occurs in the Philippines, killing 1,126 people. In 2007, the doomsday clock is set to five minutes to midnight in response to North Korea's nuclear testing. In 2008, Kosovo declares its independence from Serbia. In 2012, approximately 70 ancient Olympic artifacts are stolen from the Archaeological Museum of Greece. In 2014, Jay Leno is replaced by Jimmy Fallon as host of The Tonight Show. Also in 2014, American pair Merrill Davis and Charlie White win the first Olympic gold medal for the U.S. in ice dance at the Sochi Winter Games. In 2016, Nike ends its endorsement deal with Filipino boxer Manny Pacquiao after he made comments that gay people are worse than animals. Also in 2016, the Max Planck Institute reveals that a 50,000-year-old Neanderthal woman's remains from the Alta Mountains show traces of Homo sapiens DNA, revealing the oldest known case of human Neanderthal sex. It is true, there is someone for everyone. In 2017, the discovery of a new mostly underwater continent, Zealandia in the South Pacific, is announced in the research journal GSA Today. In 2020, India's Supreme Court grants equal rights to women in the armed forces. And that just happened in 2020. In 2021, American radio personality and author Rush Limbaugh, who was known for his ultra-conservative and often controversial views, died at age 70. And lastly, also in 2021, Africa's worst effective country, South Africa, begins COVID-19 vaccinations with the one-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine in Cape Town. That was the history of February 17th. I hope you enjoyed it and that you come back for more. I put some of them right in front of you just to make it easy. <laughs>